Hello everyone, this is 5G new radio tutorial and last time we talked about uh, multi-antenna transmission and this time uh, we'll talk about the beam management. So what happens uh, how, first how to establish beam, beam and then what happens after it is established, how to maintain the beam and how to um, recover it in case it was in case it was lost. <clears throat> so, uh, as we discussed in uh, multi-antenna transmission uh, in general, and then focused on um, multi-antenna precoding, and the general assumption for the discussion on multi-antenna precoding was the possibility for uh, detailed uh, control, including both uh, phase adjustment and amplitude scaling of different antenna elements. In practice, this requires that multi-antenna processing at a transmitter side is carried out in the digital domain before digital to analog conversion. Likewise, the receiver um, multi-antenna processing must be carried after uh, analog to digital conversion. Uh, however, in the case of operation at higher frequency with a large uh, number of closely spaced antenna elements, the antenna processing will rather be carried out in the analog domain with focus on beamforming. As analog antenna processing will be carried out on the carrier basis, this also implies that beamform transmission can only be done in one direction at a time. Uh, downlink transmissions uh, to different devices located in different directions relative to the base station must therefore be separated uh, in time. So likewise in the case of analog based receiver side beam forming, the received beam can only focus in one direction at a time. So the ultimate task of beam management is under these conditions to establish and retain a suitable beam pair, uh, which means a transmitter side beam direction and the corresponding receiver side beam direction. Uh, they generally provide good connectivity. So as illustrated on the figure here, uh, the best beam pair may not necessarily correspond to uh, transmitter and receiver beams that are physically pointing directly towards each other uh, due to obstacles in the surrounding environment uh, such a direct path between the transmitter and receiver may be blocked and a reflected path uh, may provide a better connectivity as shown on the right side of the figure on the slide so uh, this is especially true for operation in higher frequency bands with less uh, around the corner dispersion. Yeah, so called when, when the signal hits the corner and it disperses. The beam management uh, functionality actually uh, must be able to handle such a situation and establish and retain a suitable beam pair also in this case. Uh, also, the figure that is on a slide illustrates the case of beam forming in the downlink direction with beam based transmission at the network side and beam based reception at the device side. However, uh, beam forming is at least as relevant for the uplink transmission direction with beam based transmission at the device side and corresponding beam-based reception at the network side. In many cases, a suitable uh, transmitter-receiver uh, beam pair for the downlink transmission uh, will also be a suitable beam pair for uplink transmission uh, and vice versa. So in 3GPP, this uh, is referred to as uh, downlink uplink beam correspondence. So it's a similar concept that we have for uh, channel uh, reciprocity. So if we assume the channel is uh, 
doesn't varies very fast as in case of the um, low mobility scenario then we can assume that optimal uh, receive beam forming is also optimal transmit beam forming for the each side so in such a case of a uh, beam correspondence it is uh, sufficiently to just determine a suitable beam pair in in one of the transmission direction okay so uh, the same pair is then used in the opposite direction so as beam management is not intended to track fast and frequency selective channel variation beam correspondence does not require that downlink and uplink transmission take place on the same carrier frequency the concept of uh, beam correspondence is therefore uh, applicable also for FDD operation in a paired spectrum so let's uh, let's summarize this introduction and the, the state what beam management uh, which parts can beam management be divided into okay so the first one is initial beam uh, establishment uh, then uh, second one is beam adjustment and it is done primarily to compensate for movements and uh, rotations of the mobile device and also uh, compensation for the changes in the uh, environment and the third um, part of the beam management is beam recovery which is done to handle the situation when uh, rapid changes in the environment uh, disrupt the current beam pair um, so let us talk about the initial uh, beam establishment in fact uh, we have already um, talked about it in the previous section but I will quickly review here so um, initial beam establishment includes the procedures and functions by which a beam pair is initially established in the downlink and uplink transmission directions uh, for example when a connection is established so as we already mentioned in a previous section during the initial acquisition um, and during the initial cell search a device will acquire a so-called uh, synchronization signal block or SS block which is uh, shown here and in practice the <clears throat> yeah so in practice SS block uh, is different for different downlink beam, beams and um, they would also have a corresponding random access occasion and the preamble so the information about the beam uh, would actually be encoded in the preamble so after that uh, subsequent uplink random accent transmission uh, can be used by the network to identify the downlink beam acquired by the device and therefore uh, initial beam pair can be established so during this initial procedure we have a beam established so and then when communication continues after connection setup uh, the device can assume that network transmissions to the device uh, will be done using the same spatial filter or uh, receive beam former and in practice uh, it is the same transmitter beam as uh, used for the acquired SS block so consequently the device can assume that the receiver beam uh, used to acquire the SS block will be a suitable beam also for reception of subsequent downlink transmissions so uh, like uh, likewise uh, subsequent uplink transmission should be done using the same spatial or uh, same spatial filter or using the same beam as used for random access transmission so implying that the network can assume that the uplink receiver beam established at initial axis uh, will remain valid 
Okay. So uh, then after initial beam uh, is established, uh, there is a need to regularly uh, re elevate uh, well uh, um, regularly adjust or coordinate or reevaluate uh, the selection of transmitter side and receiver side beam directions due to movements uh, rotations of mobile device and also change of the uh, environments and actually even uh, like stationary devices if we have uh, well 5G is remember 5G is not only for a uh, user like a human user with uh, mobile phones but also for um, IoT systems or for cars so even for uh, stationary devices movements uh, of other objects in the environment may block or unblock uh, different beam pairs so implying uh, that there is a possible need to uh, recalculate the selected beam directions. Perhaps we can get even a better uh, data uh, transmission performance. So uh, this beam adjustment uh, can also uh, include the refining the beam shape. So, for example, making the beam more narrow compared to a relatively wider beam uh, used for initial beam establishment. Um, in the general case, uh, beam forming is about uh, beam pairs consisting of a transmitter side beam forming and receiver side beam forming. Hence, beam adjustment can be um, divided into two. Uh, separate procedures. So the first one is reevaluation and possible adjustment of the transmitter side beam direction given the current receiver side beam direction, and also reevaluation and possible adjustment of the receiver side beam direction given the current transmitter side uh, beam direction. So uh, as we just described, in general case beam forming included beam adjustment uh, needs to be carried out for both the downlink and uplink transmission directions. However, as also discussed, if downlink uplink beam correspondence can be assumed, explicit beam adjustment only has to be carried out in one of the directions. So for example, in uh, downlink direction. So uh, because for maybe it's easier for base station to um, carry out those computations and also base station has a knowledge not only about the current device but about all the devices in system uh, so can uh, coordinate interference Inter uh, there is a whole a topic called interference coordination and interference cancellation ICIC uh, you are uh, you can take a look uh, there are many research works in that direction so uh, once it's always carried at the base station and beam correspondence is assumed, uh, then during the uplink, user uses exactly the same uh, beam direction. Okay. 